All right, there we go. Hello, hello, John S. Rhodes here of the Rhodes Brothers. And the topic of today's short conversation is what to do if you are broke. Now, there are three steps that you can take in the next seven days. I'm going to give you the three steps right here, right now, and then we're going to dive into what that actually means and how we got here. So the very first thing is you need to define your why. In other words, if you do not know why you are broke, and more importantly, if you don't know why you no longer want to be broke, then you will remain poor. Now, that's a sad thing because you can get away from being broke and you can radically move toward wealth. You can greatly increase the amount of income that you are pulling in, but you have to know why you're broke. You need to actually step back and find out how am I accountable? What did I do? Take personal responsibility, understand what's gone on. There are external factors. There's no doubt that some of those things in the outside world have caused you pain, have caused you from acquiring wealth and being rich. There are things that are out there. Again, we're, we'll talk about that. We'll get to that in a moment. But you really need to know your why. So whatever has happened, no matter what or who you want to blame, ultimately, you need to take responsibility. And the reason for that is so that you can center on what you can control. And that is you. And that is your action. That is your mind. That's your activity. And it's everything about you. You are responsible for getting out of being in the state of being broke. You can do it. And only you are going to be the one that makes that happen. So step number one, clarify your why. And if you don't have a deep, strong why, if you don't have that, then when the going gets rough, you're likely going to collapse. When you're in the dip, when you're down in the dumps, guess what? you will not continue. So unless you have a strong why, you're going to be in a really rough spot. I cannot stress that enough. Now, the second thing to do is define and fully understand the value that you as a unique person, as a unique human, what you offer that's unique. And trust me, you have a unique history, unique life experience, you may have a unique education. It's possible you have a unique upbringing. But I can tell you with certainty that every single person that the Rhodes Brothers have ever dealt with, ever, any consulting or any of our customers that we've interacted with, they are all unique. And that tells me that you are unique as well. It's impossible for you to be exactly the same as someone else. So you need to look inward. Again, you have control over this, which is wonderful, and you will be able to identify those things that make unique and will allow you to provide unique value. What's really awesome about this is you can go after health, wellness, fitness. That's a major topic area. You can go after relationships, uh, let's say parenting, homeschooling, things of that nature, in terms of markets and in terms of uh, the niches or the niches you might go into. And then you might go after something related to money, starting a business, being an entrepreneur, working on a resume, uh, creating products, starting up a membership. And if you don't know how to do any of that, right, any of those things that I mentioned, it really doesn't matter because you can take your unique experience and apply it to the health space, to the relationship space, or the wealth space. There's got to be something that you have a unique perspective. And very importantly, if you've taken even the smallest step forward, what that means is that someone is right behind you. And that someone is, guess what? A customer, or at least a potential customer. There are hundreds, if not thousands of people that are one step behind you. And so all you need to do is look at your unique self, your unique abilities, and then apply that to being one step ahead and you can create a product. So we have several trainings on this, absolutely free on this channel. Look around on the Rhodes Brothers channel and you will see exactly what I'm talking about, how to make your first dollar online, 
exactly what type of product to sell, and so much more than that. Okay, so that's the second piece of the equation, and that is, clar- so you've clarified your why, that's number one, and then number two, define what your unique value is, your unique value proposition, your unique offer, and you don't need to do this so that it's super crazy concrete. We're, we're nudging ourselves, we're, we're taking you from, oh, I'm stuck, I'm in the pit of despair, to going in the right direction, orienting, rather than you know working towards more depression, more anxiety, more frustration, turn away from that using the power of your why. That's the first step. And then the second step is if you're turning away from the bad, the negative, and leaning toward the positive with your unique value, which of course is positive and productive and You've got value to provide to other people, and then you're going in that direction. You just need to be one step ahead, just one step ahead, and then you're able to create this very unique value that other people are looking for every single day, just like you. And so you'll attract the right people as well, which is a wonderful side effect. And then the third thing is you've defined your value, but then you need to align the value that you're providing to buyers. And what that comes down to is spending just even a little bit of time looking at what buyers are looking at. Not tire kickers, but buyers. So an example would be if you're on YouTube and you're just looking around at infotainment, if you're looking at ideas, but there's nothing about execution, there's nothing about what people are doing, the like the how-to. If there's none of that and it's just ideas, pie in the sky, feel good, that will get you nowhere. Instead, you could go to something like uh, an Amazon or an eBay. Amazon will stick with that. And you could look at what is actually selling. What are the best-selling books on Amazon? On what topics? What are the phrases? What are the keywords people are using on Amazon to go and, you know, they're going to buy these books and you can see how how well they're rated. You can see the titles. You can see what categories they're in. You can see the, the colors and the characters and material that are, that's placed on the cover of the book. And that'll give you a very, very good idea. And obviously the, the, the better the book is selling, the more you want to line up your unique value with the value that you see, because those are the buyers, right? Amazon is a buyer's search engine. So that tells you what people are buying. You can see the reviews, you can see the bestseller ratings, you can see the, the stars as well. And so that gives you a great idea about how you can align. You know what your why is, you will know what your why is, and you know what value your uniqueness, your unique ability, what that is and what direction to be heading and then you can go to Amazon or other platforms where things are sold and you can say, I, I can line up with that, right? I can line up with that. And you know that that is being sold. Now, that's way, way, way better than trying to come up with something brand new. Instead of trying to create something totally, completely new, instead, you can zero in and focus on those types of products with those kinds of keywords and phrases and titles and colors and images and so forth, line up with what is already being sold. It's kind of like the fisherman, right? A fisherman might say, oh, I've got a unique lure, right? Cast out and he's using this crazy lure. And is that proven to work? No. That same fisherman goes to a fishing hole that's brand new, that no one knows about it. It's secret. And you think like, oh, it's secret. No one knows about it. Uh, The fish are just hiding there. Well, no, probably someone has been there and tried to fish it, but no one goes there because there aren't any fish. So you can see that the fishermen using the wrong tools in the wrong place will get nowhere, even though it's unique and wonderful and special. That fisherman is going to come up empty. That fisherman is going to end up starving. Instead, you go to where the the fish are biting and use the same kinds of tools, the lures, the bait that other people are using. 
it's not a perfect analogy if you don't fish, especially you're like, wait, what? But it's close enough to give you an idea about go where people are buying, go to those markets where people are spending money and then just line it up and then you'll have the internal fuel, your why, to go after that, which is awesome. So I'm gonna do one more thing at the end of this training. This is really, really important, so stick with me the entire way. This couldn't be more critical. Okay, so again, your why, your value, and then where to go and how to take action on how your value lines up with buyers in the market. So we've covered those three steps, but there's something more here. So the mindset, and this is critical, this is more critical than anything else that I've talked about. The next several items are more important than what I just described. So please come in close and stick with me here. So people tend to think that they need to chase money or go after money. They also think they need to go after uh, certain skills. And while going after money and having a money orientation and realizing past failures is important and acquiring value positive skills is also important. The the critical piece of this is, is not chasing money and not just acquiring skills, but actually, truly creating value for other people. Other people are just like you and they're just like me. They have wants, needs, and desires. You have wants, needs, and desires. I have wants, needs, and desires, but you orient what you're doing and how you're doing it with their selfish nature. Now that doesn't mean selfish, bad, evil, they don't care about anything or anyone and they never give money to charity and they're unkind people. I don't mean that at all. I'm saying that people, their orientation is very I, 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 me, me, me. And in a way it has to be because they need to survive. They need to protect, they need that security. Otherwise they can't do things for other people either. So they need to look out for number one first so that they can in turn do great things for themselves, for their families, for the communities and so on. So take that perspective. What is it that they need? What is it that they want? What is it that they desire? They want the value and they're willing to trade dollars for the value you provide. They are not trading dollars for dollars. They might be chasing money and they might be chasing certain skills and experience, but they're they're doing it so that they get value from that activity. You're going to provide that value to them and then they'll exchange the money that they have or that they're earning from their own activities and they'll give it to you so that they can get value. You should be looking for 10 times the value. So in other words, if you can provide something to someone that's worth, truly worth $100 or $1,000 or $10,000, you're on your way because let's say it's worth $100 $100 of real value to them. And it could be something as simple as, you know, getting a you know a slightly better raise at a job. So if you help people get a slightly better raise than they would have gotten otherwise, maybe like, you know, 0.1%, they get like a little extra just because of something that you provide, your training, then what that means, and this is critical, like really zero in on this. If it's worth 100, worth $100 for real, you can charge $10 again and again and again forever. You'll feel great. They'll feel great. It's real value in the real world. Everyone wins. They trade $10 for $100 of value. You get the $10 and you just do this over and over and over and over again. So don't chase money. Don't chase the skills. Maybe chase experience. That's not terrible. Chase mentors possibly. But ultimately, even doing that doesn't get you there. You need to create value. You're better off you know, juicing your creativity than you are juicing up on some particular, let's say, copywriting skill. You're better off going after curiosity and learning how to be curious and learning how to learn than you are learning some programming code. And you can always get to those skills and those are tangible hands-on and you can make money with that, but then you're kind of locking yourself into a particular kind of job at the end of the day. Okay, so again, create value, create a value, know what the market, know what your buyers truly value, <clears throat> and that's setting yourself up. There's another thing too, is that you probably believe that you're solving a particular problem. Like if I have money, then my bills get paid. And so my problem are, is the pile of bills 
or what I owe other people. It might be a little more sophisticated and you say, well, I need money for retirement. So this is for, I'm chasing an early retirement or a safe retirement, right? So a lot of people tend to think that they want money, but they don't want money. Other people, customers, you and I, what we want is we want security. I'd rather have security than money. Well, if I have enough money, then I can buy security. Exactly. That's the point. That is the point. Well, if I had enough money, then, well, what are you going to do with that money? Well, you want peace of mind. You want clarity. You want downtime. You want to be able to sleep in. You want to feel better, better health, better relationships. Again, it's, it comes back down to health, relationships, and then money, but the sake of having money because you know your true end goal. So again, it's not money that most people are trying to go after. And it's not money that you're you're after. Maybe directly you're after money. And that's very, you know, it's realistic. It makes sense. It's even noble in many ways. But you're really ultimately looking for security. You're looking for peace of mind. And above all, what I hear from the most successful people who started with nothing. Let me say that again. The most successful people I know who are millionaires and multimillionaires, they are always saying, all, I mean, without, without exception, in fact, as I think about this, they're looking for freedom. They're looking for freedom from their job. They're looking for uh, time freedom. They're looking for relationship freedom. They're looking for everything that freedom entails. All the different areas of your life, you want to be free from stress and worry. Uh, free from having to ever work again, free from having to work for the boss hole, right? So that's the freedom. You can have freedom to do what you want and freedom from the things that you don't want. This is critical. Again, it's a mindset, but it's absolutely true. Again, without exception, all the millionaires and multi-millionaires that I know, they all are looking for freedom. They're trying to solve the freedom problem. Okay, now another piece of this is that people tend to think that work is super important and it's like, well, how hard you work is less important than how intelligently you work. So it's it's not work it itself, right? And other people are like, oh, if I just had the right opportunity, if I had the right luck, then that would be it. I need the right, the right template. I need exa exactly the right template, the right system. Exactly. It's like, well, there are better systems than others. There are better templates than others. There are better ways to do AI like the Rhodes Brothers. We use AI in a very specific way to generate value for other people and in turn generate wealth. But it's it's not the working hard that is as critical as um, the opportunity. And the opportunity isn't as critical as the knowledge. It's the knowledge and it's curiosity that gets you there. Again, curiosity and creativity are those two twin pillars of wealth creation. If you're broke, you're, you're, you are in, in great shape to work on your creativity and get as curious as you can at the same time, but be curious through the right lens, right? Knowing your why, knowing the value that you provide and knowing where to find your buyers. And there's, all, there's also one last little thing here, and that's there's less stopping you than you might think. So it's, it's not about action itself that's stopping you or tools that are stopping you. And as I mentioned, it's not opportunity. Opportunity is everywhere. If you can solve people's problems, if you can provide value and solve their problems, that's kind of one and the same, then you will know exactly what to be working on. You'll know exactly where to go who to talk to, what value you can provide. Everything becomes clear. You get this amazing crystal clarity and it comes down to what's stopping you. What's stopping you is the strong emotion, just being at the, you know, at the bottom of the pit, pit of, this, of despair and not wanting to be there while at the same time knowing your why and reaching for the stars at the exact same time. So it's the combination of like, stress and despair and frustration and anxiety with 
you know, aspiration, freedom, growth, helping other people, love for humanity. You put those together and really what ends up happening is that crystallizes those two things together, the the yin and the yang, the positive and the negative going, uh, it's very emotional and they will drive into and fuel and make sense of and give you clarity on your why. So it comes full circle. It all comes back around to what is your why? And you'll realize it's not action in and of itself. It's the type of action. It's not just tools. It's using the tools to create, to inspire, to give value to others. 10x value. And if you give 10x or 100x value, you'll get wealthy. Help other people get rich. Help other people lose weight to lose the fat. Help other people have a better relationship with their kids. And again, you do all these things, solve their problems, and you will get wealthy. And these are three simple steps. Going back to the beginning and coming full circle. Again, knowing your why, knowing what value you can uniquely provide, and you can. And then last but not least, lining those two things up with what you're going to be doing in the right market. In other words, where are these buyers? Where is What is this market? Where are these people? And how does that line up? And those are the three steps to take in the next seven days. But I do strongly encourage you to subscribe to this channel. And very importantly, hey, leave some comments if you'd like. And if you have questions, by all means, ask questions because we look like crazy. But look in the next video that will be appearing if it hasn't already appeared. And you'll see that there is a true breakthrough. And it lines up with exactly these three steps that you ought to be or can be taking in the next seven days. Put it on your calendar, take action, know what it is you're going to do. If you have other questions about how to solve this puzzle and how to get out of this situation, by all means, let us know in the comments below. Enjoy what's in the description. Wink, wink, right? This is John S. Rhodes signing off, and we'll see you in the next training. Thank you.